Hello everyone, welcome back to Coach Craig Sports and today we got week 15 waivers. These are going to be some important waivers as we are in the playoffs. Uh, depending on your format, you're either in the first round of the playoffs or the second round of the playoffs. If you guys already won your first round matchup, congratulations to you. But these are some guys to consider for this week and going forward. Without further ado, we'll get into it. We'll talk about a couple quarterbacks, a couple running backs, quite a handful of wide receivers. Uh, tight ends kind of thin, so if you guys have tight end questions, just shoot me a comment down below. Let me know who's available in your league, and then we can kind of go from there. And then defenses to consider streaming for this week as well. Uh, but we'll start off at the quarterback position. We'll start off with Mitchell Trubisky. He was 24 out of 33, 267 yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions, 23 yards rushing last week, uh, 30.98 fantasy points. All the quarterbacks are going to be in six point per passing touchdown formats. If you guys use four point per passing touchdown format, just kind of adjust accordingly. Uh, he's owned in 26% of ESPN leagues, 11% of Yahoo leagues. He's got two good matchups coming up uh, against the Vikings and the Jaguars. Should be pretty good days for him once again. Like I mentioned last week, Mitchell Trubisky could be one of them guys that ends up winning you a championship. Kind of one of them unprecedented guys, but sometimes you just got to roll with the matchups, especially if you've been streaming quarterbacks all year or you're just not quite trusting the quarterback that you've been using most of the year. Then next up, we got my boy Jalen Hurts. Everybody saw the upset of the Saints. Nobody really saw it coming. A couple people predicted it, myself included. Not going to dwell on that too much, though. But he was pretty efficient. 17 out of 30, 167 yards, one touchdown. But the big thing for fantasy football is that 106 rushing yards. He gives you that rushing upside. And in fantasy football, that is what you need. He's got 21.28 fantasy points this past week. Barely picked up last week. I don't know what people are doing. Like... At worst, you should have been picking this guy up and stashing him everywhere. That's exactly what I did. That's what I recommended you guys to do. He's owned in 14% of ESPN leagues, 18% of Yahoo leagues. He's still out there in a lot of leagues. He goes against Arizona this week. I know their defense played better last week, but it was the Giants. They had a lot of problems there. Jalen Hurts should be able to take advantage of that matchup. Then they play the Cowboys after that, one of the worst defenses in the league. You can run Jalen Hurts out there in your championship week, and he probably can win you that championship. Uh, so he's definitely somebody I'm looking out for if you haven't already picked him up. If you guys have been watching my videos, you probably already picked him up. Uh, so hats off to you guys. Then we got Phillip Rivers, and he was 19 out of 28, 244 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions, 21.76 fantasy points. He's owned in 24% of ESPN leagues, 41% of Yahoo leagues. Pretty good chance he's out there. He goes against the Texans this week. Should be a pretty good matchup there. Then he goes against Pittsburgh the next week, which it's not the worst matchup in the world, but it's definitely not the best either. So if anything, you're looking at probably streaming Phillip Rivers this week and then going with somebody else in week 16. Then last but not least on the quarterbacks, we got Baker Mayfield. 28 out of 47 last night, 344 yards, two touchdowns, one interception, 23 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown, 34.02 fantasy points. Owned in 29% of ESPN leagues, 41% of Yahoo leagues. He, he goes against the Giants this week and the Jets in week 16. This week against the Giants could be a little rough, but definitely that week against the Jets, you can definitely play them. So you could probably even stack Phillip Rivers and Baker Mayfield and have this week and next week set too. Then we'll move over to running backs. There's three big ones this week, honestly. And the first one is Jeff Wilson Jr., and he played on 48% of snaps this past week, 11 carries, 31 yards, a touchdown. He did lose a fumble again, uh, but he saw three targets, one reception, 13 yards, 9.4 fantasy points. Raheem Mostert did re-injure his ankle in this game. He's being evaluated. There's a chance he doesn't play this week. And if he doesn't play, Jeff Wilson Jr. is a smash play this week. So he's on at 14% of ESPN leagues, the Yahoo League. I did forget to update that one. I just double-checked. He's owned in 19% of Yahoo leagues. So there's a very good chance he's still out there. He goes against the Cowboys this week. And that's like the one of the best matchups you can have. Like I said, if he's starting this week, there's no Raheem Mostert. He's a smash play. Even if Raheem Mostert plays, he's a borderline flex guy. So he's definitely somebody you want to pick up and could definitely pay off. They go against Arizona the week after that. Still a pretty good matchup as well, especially if Mostert will be miss back-to-back -back weeks. Then we got Gus Edwards. We saw what he could do last night a little bit. Play on 27% of snaps. Not a lot there, I know. But he has seven carries, 49 yards, two touchdowns. So he offers that touchdown upside. He's been running the ball very well this season. He had one target, one reception, four yards. He had 18.3 fantasy points. He's owned in 24% of ESPN leagues, 33% of Yahoo leagues. Goes against Jacksonville this week. And I think they'll be up big in this game. I think they'll rely on him more in the second half. Uh, J.K. Dobbins might get a little bit of a breather then. 
And Gus Edwards is going to dominate this Jacksonville team. The Giants the week after that, not, not quite as good of a matchup, but definitely somebody if you need a running back that you could go out, pick up, and play this week. Then we got Philip Lindsay. He played on 48% of snaps, 11 carries for 24 yards. Nothing great there, but he had two targets, two receptions, seven yards, 5.1 fantasy points. He's a guy that just needs to be owned. He has two very good matchups against Buffalo and New England. He's owned in 48% of ESPN leagues, 44% of Yahoo leagues. Decent chance that he's still out there, honestly. And like I said, these are very good matchups coming up. You, Buffalo's been hit or miss against the run all year. The Patriots, we saw what happened with Cam Akers. So Philip Lindsay, especially if something would happen to Melvin Gordon. I don't even like that. Uh, but last but not least on this list of running backs, and I throw him on the running back because if you're picking him up, you're probably going to play him as a running back, is Lynn Bowden Jr., he played on 71% of snaps this past week. He had one carry for two yards, nine targets, seven receptions and for 82 yards. And he had 15.4 fantasy points, owned in 1% of ESPN leagues, 2% of Yahoo leagues. He's eligible at both wide receiver and running back. You're probably going to get the best use out of him if you use him as a running back. I don't know if I'd pick him up just as a wide receiver, but being eligible at running back in both ESPN and Yahoo is definitely some value for him here. They're going to be without probably Mike Gesicki. They're already going to be without Jakeem Grant. Devontae Parker could miss this game as well. And then you're looking at maybe Miles Gaskin missing. Maybe Matt Breed is still missing. Maybe Salvin Ahmed is still missing. So they need to get the ball to somebody. So he's going to be able to get the ball in space, kind of playing that slot wide receiver spot. Uh, he goes against the Patriots this week and the Raiders next week. Uh, the Patriots this week, not the best matchup in the world, but he definitely has opportunity to put up points. Raiders matchup next week, if some of those guys are still missing, could be a very good matchup for him. Then last but not least, we got the key handcuff running backs to consider, essentially. I added uh, Latavius Murray to this list as well this week. But we're going to start off Alexander Madison, owned at 32% of ESPN leagues, 27% of Yahoo leagues. Boston Scott, 22% in both. Tony Pollard, 25 in ESPN, 22 in Yahoo. Tony Pollard is actually somebody to consider. Just kind of monitor uh, Ezekiel Elliott's status as well. He's kind of got a bruised thigh that's been bugging him as well. Then we got Carlos Hyde, owning 26% of ESPN leagues, 27% of Yahoo leagues. Then Adrian Peterson, 52% of ESPN, 53% of Yahoo. Latavius Murray, 63% of ESPN, 68% of Yahoo. Then we move over to wide receiver position. We're going to start off with my buddy, Tim Patrick. The most disrespected fantasy football wide receiver in the league. He played on 82% of snaps this past game. Five targets, three receptions, 36 yards, and another touchdown. 12.6 fantasy points. This is eight out of the past nine games that he's played with a real quarterback that he scored double-digit fantasy points. So he's, you know, your safe, reliable guy. He's owned in 30% of ESPN leagues, 28% of Yahoo leagues. Goes against Buffalo this week and then the Chargers in Week 16 especially if you're needing some consistency at your last wide receiver position. Then we got Kiki QT playing on 75% of snaps once again. Three targets, three receptions, 24 yards, and a touchdown against the Bears this past week. I believe he did have a fumble as well, 9.4 fantasy points. He's owned in about 50% of ESPN leagues, 45% of Yahoo leagues. The Colts matchup this week isn't the greatest, but if you guys do remember, two weeks ago he did pretty well against them. Then he's got Cincinnati in Week 16. Should be a very good matchup there. Definitely somebody to consider picking up plug and play if you need to. Otherwise, I'd be stashing him for next week. Then we got Michael Pittman Jr. And he's got some decent matchups coming up. Played on 90% of snaps this past week. Five targets, two receptions, 42 yards, one carry, three yards, uh, 6.5 fantasy points this past week. Not the greatest day overall there, but he goes against Houston this week. And Pittsburgh in Week 16. Both have not been the best against wide receivers. So definitely some upside there. Owned in about 50% of ESPN leagues and 53% of Yahoo leagues. Definitely a guy to check out, consider. I know everybody's kind of jumping on the T.Y. Hilton hype train, but he's owned in more than 50% of leagues. If T.Y. Hilton's not owned in your league, go pick him up against the Texans. Should be a very good matchup there. With that being said, too, if Brandon Ayuk is out there in your league, Go pick Brandon Ayuk up as well because he plays Dallas Cowboys this week. Debo Samuel's missing. He's going to have a good end of the season as well. Then we got Nelson Aguilar played on 66% of snaps this past week. Nine targets, five receptions, 100 yards, one touchdown, 21 fantasy points. He's owned in 39% of ESPN leagues, 36% of Yahoo leagues. Goes against the Chargers this week. It's a fairly good matchup, and they play on Thursday Night Football as well. Then we got Miami week 16. 
Then we'll talk about another Texans wide receiver. It's one of the guys I do like. Is Chad Hansen played on 80% of snaps, 7 targets, 7 receptions, 56 yards, 12.6 fantasy points. He's owned in 5% of ESPN leagues, 2% of Yahoo leagues. So there's a good chance he's still out. 7 targets in back-to-back weeks. Obviously, when you got Deshaun Watson as your quarterback, that gives you some upside as a wide receiver. If Brandon Cooks misses once again, he should have a good day against the Colts and against the Bengals in Week 16. Then last but not least, we got James Washington. And he played on 81% of snaps this past week, saw six targets, three receptions, 29 yards, and a touchdown. So this is back-to-back weeks with a touchdown for him. 11.9 fantasy points, owned in 3% of ESPN leagues, 5% of Yahoo leagues. Goes against a very good matchup this week against Cincinnati. The next week against Indianapolis, not the best matchup in the world, but you know the Steelers are going to be throwing the ball. He's been playing more recently since Deontay Johnson has a little bit of the drop sees. Chase Claypool has been losing playing time to him as well. So he's definitely a guy they've been getting on the field more often, and he's been producing, which is good to see. Then the lone tight end that I'm going to talk about is Cole Komet. Played on 85% of snaps, 7 targets, 4 receptions, 41 yards. Back-to-back weeks to 7 targets, 8.1 fantasy points. Owned in 7% of ESPN leagues, 6% of Yahoo leagues. Goes against Minnesota this week, should be a pretty good matchup there. Goes against Jacksonville in week 16, also should be a good matchup. So he's definitely someone to consider. Like I said, most of the tight ends that I'd really consider are up over 50% right now in one in either ESPN or Yahoo. Like I said, if you guys need to pick up a tight end uh, and there's different guys available in your league, just get, leave me a comment down below. Let me know who's available, who you got on your team already, and we can kind of go from there, try to pick the best guy for this week. Then last but not least, we got the defenses to consider for your week 15. So these are my streaming defenses that are pretty available. So first off, I got the New England Patriots. Owned in 47% of ESPN leagues, 48% of Yahoo leagues. Goes against Miami this week. I know the Patriots didn't look good against the Rams last week. But look at the Dolphins offense. They're all banged up. They weren't that great to begin with. Two as a rookie quarterback. Bill Belichick has a history of destroying rookie quarterbacks. And they're going to come back. They're going to bounce back big time in this week. And they're going to have a good week. I guarantee that. Then I'll move down to Tennessee. They're owned in 22% of ESPN leagues, 38% of Yahoo. They go against Detroit this week. And the main reason I have them on this list is Matthew Stafford's injury with his ribs now. He's obviously got that thumb injury beforehand. If Matthew Stafford does not play, if Chase Daniels is the quarterback in this game, could be a good week for Tennessee's defense. And then last but not least, I got Dallas once again. And like I said, I think Jeff Wilson Jr., he's going to have a good game. But Nick Mullins is not a good quarterback. He's averaging about two turnovers a game. So there's definitely opportunity for a streaming defense here. Dallas played well last week. We'll see if they can continue that momentum over to this week. But they're owned in 23% of ESPN leagues, 29% of Yahoo leagues. So there's still a pretty good chance that they're out there. Uh, But with that being said, these are all my waiver picks for this week. If you guys have any questions at all regarding waiver claims, who to pick up, who to drop, Feel free to leave them down in the comments. I'll go through each and every one, trying to help you guys out as much as I can. I want to help you guys. I want to see you guys do well in the playoffs. I want to see you guys bring home some championships. But with that being said, if you guys liked and enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Greatly appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. It helps build the community that we're trying to build here at Coach Craig Sports. And that's one for you, the viewers. And with that being said, if you are a new or current subscriber who's yet to do so, also hit that notification bell down below. Let you know every single time I post up a new video. I post up about five videos a week. Monday is the top performers. Tuesday is waiver wires. Wednesday is the starts and sits for the Thursday night football matchup. Thursday is the DFS value picks. Friday is going to be starts and sits for every remaining matchup. We're doing that on Friday again since there are some Saturday games this week. Then also, if you guys follow me on Twitter, I try to release the notable inactives for each game. If you guys haven't checked out my articles as well on the Podcast Network, please do so. We also have a great team of writers over there. We collaborate on a weekly start set article. You guys should definitely check that out as well. The link to that website is down in the description below. And then lastly, the Two Point Podcast, uh, where my best friend and I, we go through each week. We do previews for every game and recaps for every game, just talking about what we think is going to happen and then what actually happened and trying to analyze it a little bit in detail.
The link for that is down in the description as well. But with that being said, that's all I got for today. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed. Like I said, if you guys have any waiver questions at all, please feel free to leave them down in the comments. Or you can get a hold of me at CoachCraigSports at gmail.com, on Twitter at CoachCraigSport, or on the Coach Craig Sports Facebook page. But with that being said, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and have a great rest of your day.